allow me to take this opportunity to thank you for being part of this virtual meeting which is composed of our bureau as well as the regional economic communities heads this is a unique uh, moment and opportunity for all of us we are meeting virtually away from each other because of the current situation that confronts the whole world so I'm really delighted that notwithstanding what the whole world is going through you all, your excellencies, heads of state, you've been able to set aside time for us to meet in the fashion that we are meeting. I'm honored and Africa is really honored as well that we can meet in this fashion. The Bureau of the Assembly of uh, our AU heads of state and government has held two virtual meetings since COVID-19 has descended on our continent. And for us, this is a wonderful continuation of our broad consultation on this crisis that the world is confronting, that we can meet with our regional economic communities head to confront the challenge that is before us now as the continent. We are confronted by an unprecedented public health crisis, which in many ways poses a real existential threat with far-reaching socio-economic consequences for all our people on the continent and our countries. While the numbers of infections in Africa at this time is lower than elsewhere in the world, we expect that the peak of infections in Africa will definitely come later. And this is what the science is telling us. And this will be with devastating consequences. We are concerned about the impact the virus will have on our societies, on our communities and on our public health systems. To effectively protect the peoples of our continent against this virus, we do urgently need more health workers, medical supplies and equipment including ventilators. This is the challenge that confronts all our countries on the continent and this is what gives rise to this type of meeting that we should all get engaged in trying to find solutions. The AU has undertaken various measures to date to contain the spread of the virus but also to mitigate its economic fallout that is bound to come. Among other things, your Bureau agreed as it met on the last two occasions, joined also, I should have added, by a number of other heads of states who we invited based on their various linkages and involvement with a number of organizations that we needed to rope in to assist in the fight against this pandemic. Those meetings that we held agreed to establish the AU COVID-19 Response Fund, a drive as a drive to raise additional funds for the Africa Centers for Disease Control 
and prevention and intensify the lobbying for, from the international community for a comprehensive, robust economic stimulus package for Africa. To date, we have managed to raise $25 million for the response fund and an additional $36.5 million for the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We have, during the course of our various meetings, also appointed four African Union COVID-19 special envoys to follow up on the pledges that have been made by various international organizations such as the World Bank, the IMF, the European Union, and a number of others. And we've charged them with the responsibility to mobilize further international support and that they should also campaign for international participation in the AU's COVID-19 inter economic intervention. These are eminent sons and the daughter of our African continent who have done tremendous work in their various countries and also internationally. And we were proud to have appointed these envoys whose names the AU Chair Commission will disclose when he gives us an update. In the course of doing our work, we've addressed the virtual summit of the G20 and the virtual joint meeting of the World Bank and the IMF, underscoring the need for a comprehensive, robust economic stimulus package for Africa. In these engagements that have spanned the involvement of the AU Commission Chair, my brother, Musa Faki Muhammad, that have also involved a number of our other heads of states, such as President Kenyatta, President Kagame, President Makisal, and President Chisekedi, who participated in all this, as well as Prime Minister A.B. Ahmed, we've been able to campaign across the board for assistance for Africa, together with, of course, the, head, the other heads of state who are members of our Bureau. We also argued for a waiver of interest payments at the multilateral level and by let and the debt stand still for countries on our continent as we engaged with the bodies such as the IMF and the World Bank. The economic injection that should ensue from that will support both the humanitarian needs of the peoples of our continent and place the continent on a path towards economic recovery. We further emphasize the need to ensure trade and investment flows are not further disrupted by the measures inconsistent with the World Trade Organization rules. On Thursday last week, I chaired a successful video conference meeting of the Bureau of the Assembly, as well as other heads of states who participated with 21 African business leaders to obtain their support for the AU COVID-19 strategy. The meeting expressed its full support for a two-year debt standstill and a proposal to develop a plan for the restructuring of both the private and bilateral debt that many countries as well as companies have. It was further stressed that grants from the World Bank and the IMF to the poorest countries must be 
additional to what had already been planned. In general, the response from the international community has been positive, with various partners making pledges, offering debt relief measures, and providing concrete support in the form of medical supplies. We have also gone ahead to appoint one of our leading business people on our continent who will work with others, Mr. Strive Masiiwa, to head up the mobilization and the coordination of supplies that should come to our continent on a globular basis and on a massive scale so that we are able to benefit as a continent on economies of scale. So he is already in contact with a number of suppliers together with other colleagues so that we are able to act as a continent as one. We've also been able to interact at close range with the World Health Organization and pledged our unequivocal support as the continent on a pan-Africanist basis to the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Grebiesis. We should welcome the initiative by the World Health Organization, together with many, many other heads of state, to work together to accelerate the development of new vaccines, tests and treatments for COVID-19 and ensure equitable access. Now it is important that all of us as African countries should be appreciative of the work that is being done also by our own Africa Center for Disease Control, which is at the center of the continent's health response. We will be able to get a report in this regard. There is also an urgent need. We've argued and stressed for economic sanctions against Sudan and Zimbabwe to be lifted in order to provide the necessary space for these countries to devote their resources towards fighting against the COVID-19 virus. At this time, it is also vital that we intensify efforts to end all forms of violence, destabilization and terrorism on our continent. If we are to be successful in overcoming the coronavirus pandemic, we need to work even harder to silence the guns and to ensure that they remain silent. In conclusion, as I open this meeting, I'd like to acknowledge the commendable efforts of African leaders in their respective countries to contain the virus and adapt measures to mitigate against the economic impact. It is clear that this virus knows no borders or nationality. In our response, it is therefore essential that we remain guided by the principles of unity, of solidarity, collaboration, and more importantly, of working together in a cooperative spirit, all of us as African countries to confront this virus. And working together as leaders, as AU member states and as regional economic communities, I have no doubt that our people will be spared with the worst effects of this global crisis and we will be able to place our continent on a path of recovery and reconstruction. And with those words, I want to truly thank you for having agreed that we should have this meeting on a virtual basis so that we can get to fully understand how we are all dealing with this virus so that we can share experiences we can share knowledge with each other 
and so that we are able to act together as the continent.